folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, back and ready to do a movie review again. After taking a long break, last week was Thanksgiving, which I had a nice, gorgeous, delicious turkey to join in with potato salad, bread rolls, enough to make turkey sandwich with, but I just had bread rolls, <laughs> salad, and rice, along with dessert with pumpkin pie and cheesecake along with a nice cold drink to wash it all down <laughs> and I was stuffed and of course I had to continue with my Black Friday shopping buying some more physical media such as 4K's Blu-rays and DVD's at Best Buy, Target, Walmart and even Dollar Tree for sure <laughs> yeah going back and forth to buy whatever I can even though it wasn't easy because I tried to find some of the other titles, but they were sold out. So I ended up getting the ones that were available for a great price, but some of them did cost a little more. But hey, at least I did what I could. And hopefully, if I get a chance to find a couple more titles that I didn't have a chance to pick up, I'll, I'll be able to get a gift card from my family for sure um, when Christmas arrives. So maybe I'll be lucky this time. But I'm sure the price is going to be a little higher by then. So I don't know, but we'll see. Meanwhile, we had to continue to buy some clothes for the family and other gifts too. You know, we had to get some like, games and all that we need. And also clothes for us too. You know, me, my sister, and my mom <laughs> at JCPenney. At Macy's and all yeah and then I had to continue to post some commercial breaks on my YouTube channel for sure you know since I couldn't do any reviews I, I should have done some you know just to take a break but I know I just didn't have the time but I wanted to relax and just have fun I needed some time anyway <laughs> so that's why anyway my last movie review which was two weeks ago, um, and that's one of the, the movies that I picked up uh, recently while during Black Friday shopping earlier, yeah, before later, <laughs> was The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Yeah, I picked up the special edition Blu-ray at Target for a great price, $15, of course. Um, since my review was only 49 minutes over, I want to mention a few more. I mean, even if I mentioned it already, that's okay. Maybe just want to add some more details to it. Because sometimes I do forget. But, hey, it's okay. Um, there was indeed the giant uh, Pal Max robot uh, named the Glaxian 5000, who was voiced by Conan O'Brien himself. Yeah, which Pal just sent him right over. Um, just to join him with other robots, too, to go in to stop humanity and all while the Mitchells are ready to save the day I mean they even performed the Mitchell special which you know Rick the father had to speed up with the pinometer enough to make a huge giant leap like a, a big jump <laughs> and also crash all these other machines too uh, Katie of course performed that as well you know got it from his father. I got it from her father, of course, even though they weren't connecting with each other for sure. But it took some time because Katie had to do what she can to save the family on her own since all the others are all together. You know, Linda's trying to take care of all these other robots, you know, kicking their kicking their asses for sure after they just trap um, Aaron. And who loves dinosaurs into that big uh, jail cell cube going in with all the rest of the humans and uh, <laughs> so on and so forth too while Rick was trying so hard to log in on onto a YouTube page sign up and try to broadcast all of uh, Katie's uh, short films that features uh, Machi yeah the um, <laughs> Their, uh, their pet dog, who's a pug. 
I, I even love the moment when the, <laughs> when the robots uh, couldn't recognize uh, Monchi, like they thought he, he was either a dog or, or any other <laughs> creature. Just, just such a hilarious movie. Uh, it's a great family film for a CGI animated feature from Sony Pictures Animation. Uh, check this out. Uh, buy the Blu-ray for sure. I hope it gets a 4K from Sony if they ever do. But either way, um, it's great to own it. But if you want to watch it on Netflix, especially on 4K streaming, go right ahead. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So now, um, for this one particular dysfunctional family who is obsessed with hobbies around, let's get around with this other dysfunctional family known as the Parkers. Because you wouldn't believe this, and I couldn't believe it myself either, but we finally got a true and real sequel to the original 1983 Christmas classic, A Christmas Story. Yeah, you know the story, folks. We have Ralphie Parker, who all he ever wanted was a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas, but like his mother said, he'll shoot his eye out. Yeah, he's joined in with um, not only his mother, but also his father, the old man and his brother, uh, Randy. Yep, and they're all portrayed by Peter Bensley, along with uh, Devin McGavin, Melinda Dillon, and Ian Petrella, with Gene Shepard uh, portraying as the adult narrator for Ralphie. Yeah. And we also got Scott Schwartz, Artie Robb, and Zach Ward, and even Yanyo Anya and Teddy Moore as Flick Schwartz, um, Scott Farkas, the bully, Grover Dill, his partner and best friend, Miss Shields, the teacher, yeah, <laughs> and all the rest of the characters that, that we all know of. <laughs> yeah, you never get tired of that movie. I mean, especially when they played us 24 hours on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve on uh, TBS and TNT. I know KTLA played the film too when at the time uh, since the late 80s when it was part of the MGM UA Premier Network and they played it throughout the 80s and 90s. And I think they stopped playing it and, and have TBS and TNT continue its tradition. And of course you can watch the movie on physical media too like on not only on VHS and laser discs, but also on DVD. Yeah, even a new special edition on DVD, and of course Blu-ray. And now we just finally got the 4K release after all this time. Yep, and I heard the transfer is is incredible. So maybe someday I'll I'll pick that up um, as an upgrade to my previous Blu-ray. Yeah, for sure. And I'll have all the extras, and I'll probably put a digital code on there, too. <laughs> yeah. But it's such a classic movie, for sure. Never get, never gets old. And still holds up today. But now, um, because after 10 years, I mean, we had that terrible, horrible truly insulting your intelligence disaster of a sequel called A Christmas Story 2, which this time they had Daniel Stern to play the old man along with Stacy Travis as the mother, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Parker, while Ralphie, Randy, and all the rest of the game are all played by different actors. Yeah, this time Ralphie... He's a teenager, and and he ends up uh, getting into bigger trouble. That you know, he ends up paying a fine for what he did. You know, he crashes, and and a uh, a reindeer suddenly fell on on top of the car. It was a police car, and then well, he almost got arrested for sure. 
or he probably did, and then he ends up working at a department store, you know, to make all these mis to make to make all these mistakes that he that he did. Had to pay for all the damages he causes. Yeah, it was a terrible film. I, I advise you to stay away from that turkey. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, and then there's this live musical that they had that was on Fox. I don't think I ever saw that one. And frankly, I would never will. What's the point? I know they've been getting live musicals of classic movies such as... The Sound of Music, uh, Peter Pan. Well, actually, Peter Pan had a lot of adaptations, but for sure. And then there's Grease, along with the Rocky Horror Picture Show. All of that. I mean, they all want to have live musicals, you know, just to boost up some ratings. Yeah, so for both two networks. Some succeeded, some failed. Who knows? <laughs> and there was uh, the 1994 uh, sequel and a truly underrated one too called My Summer Story which was known as It Runs in the Family which had Charles Grodin, God Rest His Soul uh, playing the old man uh, joining in with Mary Steenburgen as uh, Mrs. Parker, you know, the mother and Ralphie was being played by Kieran Cogan and they had other actors uh, to join in too. Uh, they got Gene Shepard to reprise his role as the adult narrator of Ralphie. Yeah. And um, they even got Teddy Moore to reprise her role as Miss Shields, her teacher. And Bob Clark also uh, directed the film as well. Because he did direct the original. That was his soul. Yeah. And I know both... Ronan and Steenburgen were, were both in Clifford, and they both came out the same year, too. Yeah. And, yeah, they didn't do very well at the box office, but it came out somehow, and it did. <laughs> but that was the one where where the Parkers uh, had a feud against uh, with the next-door neighbors, or like hillbillies types. Uh, Ralphie was interested in... And going for a competition with against that bully with the spinning tops, and he wanted to get a brand new one so he could beat that guy. While um, Mrs. Parker was was about to sell a bunch of um, gravy dishes around, there was like a contest going around. She wanted one of these, and we all know how that turned out. Yeah, and also. You know, Ralphie gets to hang out with his dad, you know, going out for fishing, that sort of thing, you know. Um, maybe someday I'll review that film. I haven't had a chance to review movies like this, I know. Uh, I did actually have the recording of the movie when I taped it off of Stars and Encore. It would be nice to get a retail uh, DVD or Blu-ray uh, from all the films if it's available for sure. Hopefully it's not out of print or anything, but... If I can find it, I'll, I'll probably pick it up for sure. I don't know when exactly, but who knows. <laughs> but I'll probably review it right away. Maybe they probably have it on streaming for sure. So, anyway. Okay. So now, <laughs> back, to, back to the subject here. We're finally going to get a movie that's now on HBO Max. It just premiered uh, recently. On November 17, 2022, and it is a redundant title, but what can you do? It's called A Christmas Story Christmas. I mean, maybe they should have called it A Very Merry Christmas Story for sure, but you get the idea. Uh, this time, Ralphie is now an adult, and he's now being reprised by, once again, Peter Billingsley, who this time has a wife um, named Sandy joining in with their sons and daughters uh, Mark and Julie and this time Julie Haggerty plays Mrs. Parker instead of Melinda Dillon 
And then McGavin, who's no longer with us, um, well, you do get to see archive footages of him. Well, this time, um, the old man passed away. So Ralphie had to bring in with the family to stay around at his childhood home. You know, just take care of his mom. And also to write an obituary to his father, even though he was trying to publish uh, his book. And all these other publishers, you know, are having trouble trying to publish it. Yeah, and I, and I know he was struggling too. Meanwhile, they gather around to have a nice uh, Christmas until some disasters go around. And plus, we get to see our old friends again. Uh, Flick, Schwartz, as well as um, his brother, Randy, and, of course, Scott Farkas, along with Grover Dill. <laughs> so, yes, uh, we got not only Peter Billingsley, but we got Ian Petrella, Scott Schwartz, Artie Robb, Zach Ward, and even Yanyo Anya to reprise their roles as adults. So it was great to see them again after all these years. And, well, they have changed, for sure. <laughs> and I had, a thing, I had a feeling this was going to be one delightful Christmas sequel that we've all been waiting for. And it's indeed a real and true spirit to the original Christmas classic of 1983. Yeah. Yeah, the movie where Ralphie wanted a Red Ryder BB gun, not to mention the old man winning a, a prize where he got a leg lamp that got destroyed, of course. And, and then he has to wrestle with the furnace, had to deal with these dogs uh, next door, you know, having to fix the car and all that. Yeah, all that. <laughs> and then Ralphie... Uh, curses by saying the word well it was the f word but he did but it did sound like he did say fudge <laughs> okay i was very excited to see how it turns out because i didn't know this was going to happen after seeing the trailer i thought wow we're, we're actually getting plenty of movies coming up before we're getting ready for the new year okay here we go stars peter billingsley once again Aaron Hayes, uh, who was in that TV series uh, Children's Hospital that was on Adult Swim. Uh, she also had a spinoff called Medical Police. And I think she's done other things, too. Uh, Julie Haggerty, um, you may remember her from the first two airplane movies as the stewardess, Elaine. <laughs> yeah. I love the airplane movies. They're just hilarious. And she was also in the movie A Midsummer Night's Sex Comedy. That was a Woody Allen film. She was also in Lost in America, an Albert Brooks film. Uh, what About Bob? Yeah, that comedy with Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfuss. Yeah, she played Faye in the film. And, yeah, she was in other movies, other comedies and all that. So, you always recognize her. <laughs> that, that very cute voice of hers. Anyway, Ian Petrella, Scott Schwartz, Artie Robb, Zach Ward, River Drosse, Billy Brayshaw, Julianne Lane, Higon Grace uh, Muggeridge, Colleen Galloway, along with Alistair, and Yanyo Anya. Yep. Uh, the story, of course, is written by Nick Schnick, along with Peter Billingsley and Kate Claytis, who also directed the movie. He had the same man who did the first two that's on Netflix. With both Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn, two Christmas movies called The Christmas Chronicles. And um, he also did uh, some Peanut specials, the brand new ones that are on Apple TV+. Plus. And yes, he also directed the Angry Birds movie. So on. And what a talented animator and film director for sure. 
to do this one. The movie began set in December 1973, which was 33 years ago after the events that became the most memorable Christmas time ever during his childhood days at Holman, Indiana, where we get to meet this one dysfunctional family known as the Parkers, such as the older brother, Ralphie, who was played by Peter Billingsley, along with his younger brother, Randy, played by Ian Petrella, also join in with his old man, the father, Mr. Parker, played by Deborah McGavin, and Mrs. Parker, their mother, played by Melinda Dillon. Yes, where Ralphie wanted the Red Rider BB gun, where the old man wanted his prize, the lake lamp, <laughs> and everyone else, you know, does their usual stuff too, and they gather around with all the Christmas gifts that they wanted and everything that they got, <laughs> so on and so forth. Yeah, it was the best Christmas ever. Anyway, Ralphie, who's now an adult, has been moving away from Holman to Chicago, Illinois, with his loving wife, Sandy, played by Aaron Hayes, along with their two children, their son and daughters, Mark and Julie, both played by River Droger and Julianne Lang. Ralphie has been taking a year off from work just to write his very first novel, which unfortunately all the publishers have rejected it. And as the family prepares for Ralphie's parents to come visit for Christmas, uh, Mrs. Parker has sent out the bad news to find out that his father, the old man, had passed away. So now they have to make their way to home in, in Ralphie's beat up 1966 Plymouth that he has. He needed a new radiator for sure, so they'll be working. So now he goes back to his childhood home to visit Mrs. Parker, who receives a large number of casseroles that she made for condolence offerings, for sure. But she gave Ralphie two tasks that she wanted him to do was to write his father's obituary and to take up the manual of making Christmas special for the entire family. So, as it follows, uh, Ralphie's children ends up be friends with, with one of the Bumpus kids next door who uh, happens to be a stuck-up know-it-all. But they're being bullied by two kids on a snowmobile while they were building a snowman <clears throat> and hoping Ralphie will st will stop them and hoping they will be able to stand up against those two by plotting a revenge. Therefore, Ralphie have reunited with his best pals, um, including Flick, who's played by uh, Scott Schwartz, who now runs uh, a tavern, yeah, which is a bar, you know, where all the all the people gather around to have some beer, and sometimes they get called by their names. So yes, he runs as as a bartender, and Schwartz, <clears throat> his best friend, of course, <laughs> played by Artie Rob, still lives with his mom but ends up running up a large tab at Flicks. <laughs> so no matter what he gets, you know, like some sandwiches or a drink, I mean, he puts on his tab, hoping that he'll be able to pay for all of that sooner or later. But I know, that's that's the problem with him. You know, he, he has to do what he's told, because sooner or later, if he gets a big pay, he'll be able to pay all these tabs that he got. Anyway, <clears throat> as they continue to go along uh, during this particular month, um, Ralphie had to continue to find a typewriter that's somewhere in the attic where it was hidden along with all the other stuff, you know, like the <laughs> that Easter Bunny uh, 
costume that he has. Uh, well, yeah. Like his old man says, he looked like a deranged Easter Bunny. Yeah, that Pink Buddy costume. And then um, they also had the lake lamp that's already been destroyed at this point on. And then also his Red Rider BB gun was there too. The sleighs and all, all of those boxes around. They were trying to clear everything up, but he did found his very first typewriter. So he'll be able to continue to to write his obituary to his father. But he has been having some writer's block, and he was also trying to make phone calls to make sure the publisher will will pick up his novel, and with no such luck. So, with that aside, they went Christmas tree shopping. They got the this big uh, Christmas tree as they can get to fit inside the house. So it's kind of like how you know the family had pick up one and of course they had the bargain with the, the owner to actually sell those Christmas trees and hoping that they don't get the aluminum ones or any of those fake Christmas trees which unfortunately they actually have in the attic all this time but hey you get the idea uh, but they had uh, anyway Ralphie had some trouble trying to set it up right and then both Mark and Julie had to do all the work by setting up all the ornaments while Ralphie, Sandy, and and Mrs. Parker were just just relaxing, having a drink, like some cocoa or or some you know beer or something, or maybe wine. Yeah, yeah, they were having yeah they were drinking some red wine. <laughs> That's what they were doing. <laughs> but then they they also pitched in to help, and unfortunately there was no angels so. They had to set it up with a star on top, but Julie was feeling very nervous about it. Yeah. Anyway, as they continue, um, they had to do some more uh, work shifts too. Uh, they were going to go outside, you know, go out for skating. Uh, Sandy was putting out uh, her nice uh, skating boots, getting ready, but unfortunately, she ends up having a um, a sprained ankle so she couldn't go that's why she had to wands up with crutches and then uh, they had to go Christmas shopping uh, they went to that department store as we all know <laughs> just like in the original movie uh, which they just go around exploring all the the toys and all the gifts that they have inside and then they just went inside Ralphie just rushed by to grab all the gifts that's on their list, exactly what they wanted. Meanwhile, Mark and Julie had to go up to see Santa Claus on, you know, with all these slides and on top of this North Pole, as we as we all know. You know, remember the scene. Only this time, you know, Mark already explained to Santa, and then he has to go down the slide. Well, Julie eventually uh, tried to bring out some spunk into her by <laughs> trying to um, try to see if this was the real Santa for sure you know just just to have a lucky guess you know try to you know try to make sure you know who he really is <laughs> so yeah he got what he what she wants and they just went down the slide meanwhile um, Sandy and Mrs. Parker were just ready to have a drink, you know, some beer or so, or just to relax. And once finally everything was done, you know, he finally uh, completed the list. <laughs> They're ready for a drive, um, which unfortunately their his car broke down. Yeah, his 1966 Plymouth. Yeah, which I know they were singing the you know, Jingle Bells, which I, eventually they just... <laughs> They just throw in the, you know, the Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin Lee and Egg, uh, parody song, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, the Joker, the Batmobile lost his reel and the Joker got away, eh. Yeah, the, the Jingle Bells, Batman parody. <laughs> and of course, um, they end up um, going out for a snowball fight, 
you know, Ralphie with Mark and Julie, which unfortunately Ralphie accidentally threw a snowball at Julie's uh, face while she was on top of the tree stump. So they had to rush her straight to the hospital. It turns out that she actually had a blind eye. So she had an eye patch. And then all of a sudden, the gifts were stolen as the trunk uh, opens wide open. So now they were even afraid to tell the kids that, well, they lost the gifts. And, well, now they're thinking that Christmas is going to suck now. Well, now they know this is going to be such one lousy Christmas for sure. But to buy back everything that happened and hoping to make it up for sure, and maybe they'll find a way to get the gifts back, or who knows, maybe maybe they'll, they'll wait until Christmas arrives. Well, Ralphie decided to take um, Mark to a Flix, you know, just to um, calm him down, you know, have a father and son talk, and... And also have, and maybe enough for him to, to earn more money by being on the spot of his first job bartending with Flick. So that way, you know, he'll help around and, you know, even call in with all the other patrons. You know, if, if someone's uh, wife appears and they want to make sure they don't get caught. <laughs> Not to mention a physical stunt that Flick is finally going to pull to Schwartz because remember when they were kids Schwartz had to pull a physical stunt on Flick by sticking his tongue on the pole yes and they even show all the flashback memories of that and I know Ralphie's doing the narration too <laughs> well this time um, this is going to be a one dangerous physical stunt that Schwartz has to pull in order for him for, for Flick to pay out all the large tabs that he made, for sure, was to do this one giant slide by actually running down the sleigh that he has, which I know this one is like a really big one. And he actually, so he actually tried to do that, for sure, and then the sleigh went all the way down into the slide that was already abandoned for sure and he flew all the way up in the air and then landed straight onto the ground yeah, and, <laughs> and on the snow almost suffered an injury for sure but he was alive <laughs> luckily so now everyone else is trying to do the same thing you know they had to borrow all the their kids to to try it out for themselves and yeah they all got hurt injured including Mark too because he got injured so he ends up uh, <laughs> having a broken arm by going through all these ramps yeah I mean this large ramp of course oh wow uh, so after all this comfort that's been going around too, I mean, while well, he still continues to write his obituary and hoping like he'll probably have a lifetime to finally find the right publisher for his first novel, which didn't work out, so he threw away in the trash. Um, but maybe it might, but who knows how this is going to turn out. So, going back to what was happening, well... Now they kind of sort of plot revenge where now Mark and Julie had ends up uh, getting even with those two bullies on the snowmobile and they got caught. Uh, the snowmobile crashed and then because the Christmas star had fell out of the Christmas tree, it was broken. So now they're no longer going to have the Christmas miracle that they're going to have. So afterwards because it's already Christmas Eve, Ralphie decided to go to Flix to see if he can take the, the Christmas tree star 
yeah, which has the beer logo on there. Yeah, just to borrow it for sure because all the other stores were closed. But now he got caught by, and you want to believe this, Scott Farkas as the officer. And he was going to be ready to arrest Ralphie for sure. But they're probably going to make up all the mistakes that happened in the past. So, But for good humor, he turns out to be a nice guy after all. I know we started seeing some flashbacks where, <laughs> where he's now in jail and, and suddenly we get to meet uh, an older uh, Go Grover Dill who's played by Yanyo Anya. But that's just part of his imagination. So, hey, at least we get to see him. And we get to see... An older uh, Mark and Julie Parker, yeah, their adult selves, and his wife is looking quite, <laughs> quite different too. So, to make everything up, um, it's nice to see that Scott Farkas have finally uh, has a nice leaf after all. He actually took uh, Ralphie back to his place. And he covers all this, all this trouble going around. So now he, he got the Christmas star from Flix that he stole, but at this rate borrowed. And now they put it on the tree, and and now they're just getting ready for Christmas. And it turns out Christmas turned out to be for the best when all the presents have finally arrived. For sure. <laughs> So now they got all the gifts that they wanted, you know, like a sleigh, an easy bake oven, a radiator, and all this other stuff too. Um, now he begins to find now another present for sure was that now his father's obituary is on the newspaper articles that's being sent out by Mrs. Parker. So now everyone. I gather around the entire family are just are just reading the articles and and they're also having some all these casseroles that he that she made and and also has a nice delicious turkey to join in with all the other foods and stuff <laughs> and even one of the guys uh, love casserole so <laughs> he eats it all up. Yeah, and it has a very touchy moment when Ralphie got to read the obituary on the newspaper. and It was a very sad moment too, but yet a very happy time. And we get to see the flashbacks of, of everything that happened from the past to the present. Even on the end credits too, we get to see you know, a lot of screenshots of the past and present of these movies and it kind of reacts to those scenes uh, that was just terrific and heartwarming right there yeah. and and indeed it was I mean this was a very big surprise and I'm glad we finally get a sequel that's done right for sure and now here's a better movie than last year's 8-Bit Christmas, which was a rip-off to A Christmas Story. Yeah, I had to mention that right away. Uh, but Which was okay, but it's just, it tried to be as plausible as it could be, but it just, it just seems like, you know, they kind of failed on several levels here. And that was the one where, you know, all the kid ever wants was a Nintendo 8-Bit system. <laughs> yeah. The NES. Just as Ralphie wanted the Red Rider BB gun. But but I'm glad they went for a new pace too. And you know, and, and the fact that this movie is being set in the 70s, it kind of gives you that feel. And even though it has a lot of adult humor in there, but it's also a lot of kids will really enjoy it too. And, and some very funny, memorable scenes that I just mentioned. And... It was very really nice to see uh, some of the original cast members reprising their roles again, exactly as I remember them. And I'm glad they still had it in them. Um, even though, yes, they got some new actors to join, and, and their actors portrayed um, the characters were terrific. Yeah. 
Especially Erin Hayes, too, as Ralphie's wife, Sandy. She's very beautiful, too, and and she does have, she does definitely look like uh, a 70s woman right there, and how they look, and and the kids were, were actually, were cool, too. I mean, a lot different from when they were kids, <laughs> for, for Mark and Julie, though. And the, and the two actors weren't, weren't that annoying either, so we're good. Even Julie Haggerty was great in the film as Mrs. Parker. I mean, quite different compared to her portrayal in, as Elaine in, in the two airplane films. But compared to Melinda Dillon, I, I think she really nailed it pretty well. I also love that they put in the the, the 70s uh, South Best uh, animated uh, Warner Brothers logo at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, I mean, considering the fact that, that the original film was from MGM, along with the 1994 sequel. So, yeah, Warner Brothers now own the rights because of Turner Entertainment that Time Warner had purchased since 96. Yeah, now it's uh, Warner Media, or in some cases, War Warner Brothers Discovery, because they just bought Discovery Channel and all the rest of their networks. So, yeah, by... CEO uh, David Zeloff, which I know Warner Brothers has been in a turmoil lately, down in the dumps. They've been canceling a lot of stuff too, especially all the shows that they were going to play on HBO Max. That sucks. And they canceled all this other stuff that they were going for and so on and so forth. So, <laughs> Boy, it's such a shame. But I'm just happy that we at least we got a, a great movie in our hands. And it's a Christmas movie. And yeah, all the moments were just so fun and and exciting, so not a bad scene whatsoever. So I I really appreciate it. So because you know Gene Shepherd uh, would be proud and so is Devin McGavin. You know, since they're no longer with us. But at least, you know, it definitely stays true to its source material for sure. And they really and they really are not insulting your intelligence like the Christmas Story 2 did. See? And it's great to see that Peter Billingsley had produced the film as well. Because he also wrote the story. He did his narration. And he really fits uh, true to the spirit. And, and Kate Claytis did an excellent job directing this. I mean, he really knows this by heart because I know he saw the original film himself. He loved it. So he know he's doing a lot of justice for sure. But I know they've been doing a lot of them too uh, with this story. So... I hope this movie does get a 4K and Blu-ray someday, you know, after this gets released uh, on HBO Max. I mean, if 8-Bit Christmas can get a DVD release, then so could this one, for sure. And it is very refreshing that they even throw in some a lot of Easter eggs uh, into the story. Like, aside from the flashbacks, I mean, yeah, you do get to see a little bit of of the lake lamp that's been already destroyed, but it's only just part of it. And then you get to see the Red Rider BB gun, as well as the <laughs> the Pink Bunny uh, costume and slippers. I mean, yeah, the one that Ralphie had to wear in the original. So that was in the attic, only to learn that they actually had a fake Christmas tree before they end up getting the <laughs> the big one. The real one. Yeah. Um, and the house just looks as beautiful as ever. Just like how we remembered it. I mean, they, I know they had remodeled that place um, a long time ago. And they had to try to make it look exactly how it should look. As we pictured. You know, and, and they had all the snow and everything too. All of that. It's just, just a very heartwarming Christmas that you want to have.
for this movie. And it's so memorable, too. Yeah, because this movie will look excellent to own. And it will definitely work together with, indeed, <laughs> with the first movie. And to join in with my summer story as well. But just just skip the, the live musical and the, and the Christmas story. Two, yeah, direct the video sequel. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that's a Christmas story, Christmas, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.